How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk, and I want to talk about report writing. One of the most important things you'll ever do, working in corrections. How you write that report. So we'll keep this quick and brief. It's not all inclusive, but I got some uh, notes I want to throw your way. So stand by for our sponsors. We come back and we're going to discuss report writing. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Being a corrections officer takes its toll on even the strongest individuals. The constant need to perform at the highest level, putting your life at risk in a hostile environment, and the mental scarring of traumatic experiences. 31% of corrections officers show symptoms of PTSD, and 66% of people with PTSD also suffer with a substance abuse problem. The Transformations First Responders Program is specially designed to help veterans and officers heal from the grips of addiction and PTSD in a comfortable, supportive, and serene setting. You are not alone. If you have questions about the services we offer, give us a call at 866-762-8454 to get more information on this affordable and life-changing program. Welcome back. We're going to discuss reports. Reports are our lifeblood guys don't forget if you guys like what we talk about please hit subscribe hit the bell get notified every time i post a post that's the key we're creating a venue guys it's growing we're over 1100 now so we're growing slowly but growing but i want to tell you guys something the reason i want to discuss report writing is because it's the lifeblood of what we do reports will save us but they can also end us believe it or not. So you have to take reports very, very seriously. And you also, when you write a report, you want to be clear and concise. That means you want to keep the report brief. You don't answer why, let the investigators answer why. You don't not answer why. Leave that to the investigators. What you answer is, what happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And who was involved? You keep it clear you don't use professional jargon because you never know who's going to wind up reading it. And most of the times when we get our reports, the people that read it, they don't understand our professional jargon. So it's best that we keep it simple because you can have an, inc an incident at the institution that's going to travel outwards. And now it's going to go into the hands of lawyers and, and well, ultimately the public. So you want to keep it simple for them, concise and clear. Let them figure it out. But you want to keep it simple so they can figure it out. And you also don't want to use big words. Keep it simple. Trust me on this. Keep your report simple. Just state the facts. State the facts. You're not looking to impress anybody with your knowledge of the English language when you're writing a report. You're just looking to take down the facts. And as a supervisor, give your people the chance to write their report. Don't rush them. Because it, these reports, they will make you, as I said, or they will break you. So they need their time. They need to really invest in what they're going to say. But again, it's concise and to the point. And don't eliminate any facts. If an inmate says they're going to kill himself, you put down exactly what they say. If an inmate makes a threat, don't say that the inmate made a threatening statement. Say exactly what the inmate said. Sometimes when it gets sent to the DHO, the disciplinary hearing officer, uh, there are some DHOs that would, would want these charges to stick. But remember, they're being objective and they have to go with presented in front of them. And if the reports are not there to support the charge... That inmate's going to walk scot-free. So you want to make sure that you invest as much as you can in your report. Because that's what's going to hold weight. That's what's going to keep those inmates, if they've done something wrong, where they need to be. But that report has to be... It has to be immune to all types of arguments against it. Which means that when you write a report... 
You have to be prepared for every angle. So it's okay is after you've done writing a report, you can show someone else and ask them, how does this read? You're not asking them to write it for you. You're just asking them, how does this read? Does this make sense? And guys, check this out, guys. I know some people like to sit together when they're writing a report, like you just have an incident, and all the team sits together and discusses what they're going to write. It's kind of a bad idea, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, one of the big things now is, unfortunately, when investigators get a hold of that report and they see that those reports are identical, that's a flag for them. That's a flag. It's going to look like the reports are doctored. Guys, our reports are bound to be different. We're human. We see things differently. If, we, if all our reports are exactly the same word for word, that's an immediate flag. That's an immediate flag. And when it starts to travel up, people will start being drawn out and you'll start seeing the inconsistencies in that report. So please, when you guys write a report, you guys can discuss the incident, but you should be writing your reports uh, kind of alone. I know some people may go against that, but it is the truth. You have to write down what you know happened, your perspective. And guys, don't be afraid. If you had to use force, write it down. If you had to employ force, write it down. If you had to use your baton, write it down. Write where you hit them or her with the baton. Most of the time when people get in trouble, it's not because they employed force. It's because they didn't put it in their report that they employed force. Remember, the investigators are going to look for those loopholes. So if you, if you wrote down that there was no force employed and the inmate's a little battered, how do you explain that? So again, to keep it quick, reports, just the facts. Do not answer the why. Leave that to the investigators. Be concise. Be simple. Remember, it's not just people in our field that's going to read those reports. Those reports could venture out. So you have to write it as if you're telling a story to the public. And if something happened and you had to use force, write it. Don't hide it. Never lie on that report. Always be honest. Always be honest. Trust me, guys. Don't write those reports together. You could discuss what happened, but when you go to write your reports, you should write it separately. And then your supervisor can bring those reports together and then write their remarks on the back. But remember, guys, we all see things differently. So they have to write their end of it. You have to write your end of it. That's the key. And the reports will make or break your career. If an inmate threatens you, then you say exactly what he said that was the threat. Inmate says he's going to kill themselves, then you say exactly what they said or exactly what they were doing. Do not paraphrase that. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, if we want our charges to stick, then it's all about how we write our reports. The weight of the report is what matters. How we write our report is what matters. As always, guys, love you guys. Stay safe. Some, some, some good articles on report writing from Corrections 1 you can find. I, I thought they were good articles. But as always, guys, stay safe. Love you guys. Show us here. Talk. Please subscribe and hit that bell. <laughs>